Hi, this is Kelly. And this is Jenna. And you're listening to ODFM. Today's episode is One Doppelganger from Murder. Have you been told you have a doppelganger before? The closest thing I've been told that is my doppelganger is um, Flo from the <laughs> Progressive. Oh, commercials. what? <laughs> You're so much prettier than Flo. Although Flo is oh, pretty. Well, thank you. But I, <laughs> but um, I did go as her for Halloween one I year. I remember. And people were like, you look amazing. <laughs> not a difficult costume. It was, I love there was it. not much to do to, to be Flo. And I, I don't know, I first heard the term doppelganger when I was watching Twin Peaks. Oh, yeah. In high yeah, That's I where remember I learned that. about doppelgangers. Yeah. And I had like a Kelly with the same exact middle name and both <laughs> our last names started with Mick. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. No, and her, both our dad's names were Bob. Oh, hell. <laughs> That's really <laughs> confusing. We look totally different, but she she was a little wild, so she would get in trouble constantly. And the principal always be calling me in, and I'd be like, I didn't do anything. Like, I did nothing. Did you steal another car today? I'm like, what? No, <laughs> I did not steal a car. But you should have, because you could have gotten away with it. Because you would have been like, I'm just going to blame like, it on this girl, because no one's going to believe. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Well, and the secretary would always come in, Mr. Newton. You've got the wrong Kelly again. <laughs> And he would never say sorry. He would just be like, okay, go back to class. I'd be like, ah, ah. Rude. Rude. You're like smearing my character everywhere. Yes. You're giving me a better reputation than I currently have. Stop it. (laughs) (laughs) Stop making me cooler than I am. Stop making me cool. Stop making me less dorky. (laughs) I love it. So this is Picture It, Sicily, 1950. Again. We're back Um, in Sicily again. (laughs) I know. All right. April 13th, 2011, Parsons, Tennessee. Ooh, I've never been to Tennessee. I don't think I have either. I like, I'm like, neither, well, maybe I have. I probably drove through it. I'm sure I drove through it. I know I've driven through it on my way to Florida. Okay, it's Wednesday morning, and 20 year old Holly Bobo is Uh-oh. up at 4 30 in the Doesn't morning. Does Bobo mean monkey in some language? It, it reminds probably me, does. Reminds me of That's Dora terrible. the Explorer, Diego. Oh! <laughs> Go Diego, go. Because he'd be like, Diego. Bobo. Yeah. Bobo. Anyway. There you go. That's what it is. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Tangent. No, it's okay. It's mm-hmm. okay. We have to get that out there because mm-hmm. it's Got really it. hard to just breeze past a last name of Bobo. It's very difficult. <laughs> it really it's is. It's going to come up a lot okay. in, the, in the rest of the story, so we might as well address it now. Hmm, okay. 20 year old Holly Bobo. She's up at 4 30 a.m. to study for a test. Oh, girl. Damn. Jeez. I didn't. No, mm-hmm. that wasn't me. I would. No. I would, I would just not go late. to bed. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I would have stayed, stayed up late. And then crashed after the yeah. test. But oh god. But anyway, she's okay. up at 4.30 a.m. to study for a test. She is a beautiful young woman with blonde hair and blue eyes. She's a nursing student at the University of Tennessee. Her father, Dana Bobo, left for work an hour after she got up. Her mother, Karen, packed a lunch for Holly. Aww, sweet um, and then gets ready for her teaching job at nearby Scott's Elementary School. Karen kisses Holly goodbye, tells her she loves her, and leaves at about 7 a.m. And she leaves Holly studying at the kitchen table. Oh, Holly. She's dedicated. So it's like three hours later she's still studying. Girl. My brain would be mush at this point. Yeah. At 7.30 a.m., Holly gets a call from her boyfriend, Drew Scott. He was turkey hunting that day. Oh. This is a very foreign concept to me. But yeah. Cool. Mm. Especially, I don't do anything recreational. (laughs) It's <laughs> 7.30 in the morning, period. <laughs> Let alone, you know. Yeah. So, <laughs> Hunting for turkeys. Drew had recently given Holly a promise ring. And they had, been, had, they had begun excitedly planning their future together. So they'd How been together cute. for a while. They were very serious. I'd like to imagine that he called to wish her luck on his on her test. Right. That's, that's where I'd like to just imagine. Yes. So so I'm assuming they're like around 1920 or something like that. She's 20. I okay. I didn't get his age. I assume he's about Yeah, probably similar, around the same. Right? Yeah. Okay. Although he wasn't up going to school, so maybe he's graduated. Yeah. I don't know. Cuz yeah. he he has the Wednesdays open to turkey hunt. Right. Mm-hmm. Um <laughs> so shortly after she talks to him on the phone, um she gathers her lunch and homework and heads heads out to the carport to her car. Okay. They lived on a 
large piece of property, detached carport, a ways away. Around 7.45 a.m., a neighbor leaving from work hears a female screaming, stop, stop, stop it, <gasps> from the Bobo residence. Oh, somewhere. Jesus. Like I said, it's, like, it's, a, it's a pretty big property, so just Yikes. coming from somewhere in their general direction. And so the neighbor calls Karen Bobo at work because it was Aww. disturbing enough to be like, hmm, I'm just going to call and see. Yeah. Oh, good God. At about the same time, Holly's older brother, Clint, 25, who had been asleep in the house because 25-year-old guys typically are asleep at 7.45 in the morning, right? Uh, okay, so going this to, is not- Going to work, right. Clint. Okay. He's right. not a he's not a up at seven o'clock yeah. turkey hunting kind of guy. Um, he'd been asleep in the house. He's awoken by the family dog barking, just going bonkers. So he gets up and he can hear a male and female voice outside, but he's unable to make out what they're saying. Okay. He recognizes the female voice as Holly and the male voice as Holly's boyfriend Drew. Mm. Looking outside, he sees two figures in the shadows of the carport. Holly and Drew were kneeling, facing each other. Drew was dressed in camouflage. Clint knew that Drew had hunting plans that morning. Okay, so it makes sense. Makes sense, right? Clint could not make out what was being said, but it sounded like they were fighting or possibly breaking up, and he did not want to get in the middle no. of that. No, He's like, yeah, no. going back to bed. Ooh, yeah, uh, yeah. Yep. Mm-mm, Forget okay. me. Yep. I don't want to oh, be shiest. a part of that situation. Mm-hmm. So here's a quote. This is a quote from Clint. I slightly raised the blinds and looked out the window and saw Holly. It appeared to be Holly kneeling down and Drew. They looked like they were kneeling down, facing each other in the garage, and they were talking back and forth. Holly sounded very upset and heated. He was doing much of the talking, and she would answer back and things like that. I couldn't hardly make out any of the words. The only words I could make out were from Holly saying, no, why? Hmm. So, you know, it was like- And they're kneeling- That was weird, right? And he found that odd, obviously. Yeah. Hmm. In the meantime, the mom had gotten a call from the neighbor. So Karen Bobo calls home and Clint answers. There was different articles where like Clint called his mom, but she missed the call. Mm -hmm. And like, and she's at school. So I know cell phones are around, but you know, she's also at a school. Yeah, you're also busy. Something about like, right. And like, I I don't know if he called her cell phone or called the the school office. Oh yeah. Or her school. You know, so there was a little bit of confusion as to when they did finally talk to each other, who had called who, because it was like, okay, he called there, she called home and yeah, that makes sense. But eventually they connect on the phone and this all happens within a matter of minutes. So she calls home and she asks him to check on his sister. Okay. Clint sees Holly and Drew start walking towards the woods where there is a trail leading to a logging road. So they're like walking off the property. And he tells his mother, Holly and Drew just walked off into the woods. Yikes. Um. (laughs) Uh, Right? And he goes, was Holly not going to school today? Was she going out with Drew? And Karen's motherly instincts kick in. And she says, Clint, that's not Drew. Get a gun (gasps) and shoot him. Oh, my God. Right? Mama Mama Bear is out. Right. Clint, who you have to remember, has only been awake for a couple of minutes. He's like, what? Was really shocked and confused and was certain that was Drew. So he goes, you want me to shoot Drew? Like, he oh. was like. <laughs> All right, mom, What's whatever happening? you say. <laughs> you know, like, what, what, you know, Karen, realizing that Clint is not yeah, realizing kind of the situation, mm-hmm. hangs up the phone, frantically calls 911. And panicked, she tells the dispatcher, someone has my daughter. Please get there now. Oh, mama. Right. Oh, God. That's right? scary. I, see, I have chills right now. Mm-hmm. So police rushed to the house, followed by Karen and her husband, Dana. Not sure how Dana found out. But anyways, okay. he was notified, go home. Mm-hmm. So they all go home. There are signs of a struggle in the carport. Oh, shit. And a puddle of blood in the, <gasps> uh, in the garage on the cement floor. Holly's trunk mm-hmm. is popped open. Oh, shit. Her car is still there. Soon, like within like minutes, like before 8.30 a.m., there is a huge search party gathering Wow! at the Bobo's house. That's awesome. There's police, okay. there's helicopters, search dogs, friends, neighbors, and they all start searching the fields and um, farms and the woods God. of West Tennessee. It'd be so I, frantic. I can't even I read imagine. somewhere that they started by just searching the Bobo property, and then mm-hmm. they were like, no, guys, we got to like- Yeah, like, spread out. Keep sp- spreading, right? Oh, God. That's what she said. <laughs> God, keep spreading. Keep, keep spreading. going. 
You gotta, you know, get all in the there. nooks and crannies. You got <laughs> <laughs> shit. Oh, search party mm-hmm. has a new new term, new term. <laughs> right? Search new party. Meaning. Oh god. All right. So Holly's case received national attention, and the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation said it was the most exhaustive and expensive investigation the agency ever conducted. But Holly was gone. Oh god, just gone. Oh Holly, they and all that studying she anything. did. All that for nothing. studying for nothing. Son of a. Bitch. I hate when it happens. She could have gotten an A. She, I, she got up at 4.30. Mm-hmm. Girl better have gotten an A. Yeah. Right? Give her an A, honorary A, at least. God, that reminds me. This is a total side <sighs> note. But you remember being in college and there was that rumor where if your roommate committed suicide, you automatically yes. got an A for the semester? Everyone had that. Yeah. What the F was that? <laughs> That's pretty scary. Like, yeah, seriously. Right? Like, how many, I wonder if that's a motive for murder. I wonder if that's what I was going to say. Up. Like, <laughs> seriously, because you would think like, shit, I'm failing everything. I think I'm going to murder my roommate and pretend right? it's a suicide. <gasps> I will say when I was a freshman in college. You did that? Um, no, no. <laughs> but my roommate and I would joke if one of us was like really stressed out, like, oh my God, I'm not going to pass this as a week. You want me to jump out the window for you? I, I, <laughs> would, awesome. I would do that for you. <laughs> you I'd love you know, so much. I, right, exactly. I will put you in it. You know what? I will do what I can to help you. So <laughs> I'm going to, you know, I know. It's, again, That's it's part macabre. of the sick and twisted yes. humor. Yes. That the few of us weirdos have. <laughs> right. That get. See? There's other ones out there somewhere. Mm-hmm. She's out there somewhere, I think. She's out. So. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Police begin to speculate relatively quickly that Holly's abductor would be someone very familiar with the area. And also very familiar with the family's daily routine. Oh, okay. So maybe a friend or a neighbor or... okay. So they start to focus their attention on her brother, Clint. <gasps> oh, no. What? Oh, yeah. God. Whoa, what just happened? Oh, Wait, what, what do you mean the brother? Clint? That never even Clint. popped in my mind. Clint. By the way, the names in this story are so very... Tennessee. Are so very country and mm-hmm. Tennessee. I can't even, mm-hmm. I, everyone I tell you is going to be just a little I bit I thought more. of that with Clint because I was like, yeah, I knew a Clint. You know, <clears throat> Travis, oh, Clint, oh, wait. We're, all we're the gonna, Wyoming ones. Oh yeah, you're we've gonna got hear some. Him. Okay. You're going to hear them. Okay. Clint Bobo told the police that he saw his sister walk with a man who he thought was her boyfriend, dressed in camouflage with a black object in his hand. Mm. Holly was not being dragged or forced to go with him as far as he could tell. But if it was a gun. Right. Exactly. Or if he had a knife in his hand. Yeah. Who knows what she was told, right? Yikes. And he described the man to be about 5'10 and 200 pounds with dark hair. Mm. In an interview with ABC News, Clint said, quote, I knew it was Holly. I never saw my sister's face and I never saw his face. I expected Drew to be dressed in camouflage because Drew and I had talked the night before and he told me he was going turkey hunting that morning. Okay. So this all made sense in his head, right? I guess so. Yeah. And you're used to like, I I don't know, if you see someone with a guy, you know, you instantly think, oh, that's their boyfriend or girlfriend, you know. Right. And it was like literally on their property. Right. And, you know. And he's in camo. Strange people should not be coming up, you know. No. I would think the same, I think. He also told in the interview... As he watched the two figures, Clint said his sister wasn't stumbling and she was walking on her own towards the woods. He said he noticed the man was holding a black object, which he thought was a deer grunt. That is a device used in hunting. I don't know what that is, but you seem to be familiar. Yeah, that's to make sounds. Okay, so he just... bring in the deer, yeah. yeah. So he had like this frame of reference in his mind and so the pieces all fit, right? Okay. She didn't appear to be hurt, he said. I was still very confused. It still didn't enter my mind that Holly was being abducted. So oh, that imagine how brother. badly he's got to feel, right? Like I he know. stood there and watched her. That's what I would think too. But then, but it's not his fault. You would totally think it's right, a friend. Yeah. And to be honest with you, mm-hmm. at that time in the morning, if I'm woken up suddenly, like, it's going to take me a while to totally. understand what to I'm start looking processing. at. start <laughs> processing. Right? Yeah. So I feel Aww. really bad for him, right? And I feel really bad for the parents, mm-hmm. right? One child's oh missing God. and the other child is being questioned about, oh like, God. what did you do? Yeah. Ugh. Or you're oh, angry at them going, I told you to get I know. Gun. I told you to go shoot that guy. <laughs> right. That wasn't Exactly. Drew. Oh, my God. Police and the public were suspicious of Clint's story from the beginning. Oh, poor Clint. So, Jesus. I know. 
So he was thoroughly investigated. They searched his body for signs of scratches on that very morning that she was taken. They searched his computers. They started monitoring his phone calls. And they even gave him two separate polygraph tests. So why, why would they think it was him? That's what I want. I guess they just thought it was weird that he said that some stranger was there and he just watched them leave. Like, I guess that just sounded weird to them. Not, I mean, she's a grown up. You know? Yeah. You it's know, it's not like it's a, like a five year old being taken right, it's off like, by it's some not guy. Like he, exactly. No, I watched my little sister walk off with a strange man. That's not kind of what happened. Right. And again, he just woke up. He was. Yeah. He's like, eh, he thought it, he thought it was Drew. Right. Right. Yeah. You know? she so he didn't think it was weird until he's like, doesn't she have to go to school? Like, where are they going? Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. plus at first he was like, oh, oh, they might be breaking up. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to. Yeah, absolutely. Near that. And he's Especially, a guy. Exactly. Guys Especially are, a guy. Yeah. I'm not going to go in there no. and be like, what's going on, guys? Are you, you guys okay? okay? Let it's me help. Happening. No. Right. And a guy's right. going to be like, fuck this. Oh, no. hell no. Right. I'm going to put that on the blind. And when she comes back in, I'll be like, oh, were you outside? I yeah. Have- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shouldn't you go to school? Because we're, we're not talking. talking. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we're not talking, about, talking about this. Yeah. Oh, God. Okay. So they eventually clear him. They're like, okay, there's there's nothing Good. on the brother. Right. Good. Okay. Police obtain Holly's cell phone records and find that her phone traveled all through Decatur County that morning that she disappeared. Whoa. Yeah. First, it drove up north towards Interstate 40. This oh, becomes no. interesting where Interstate 40 is. Okay. And then down the interstate a few miles and then turned back around south. So it almost made like a, it like went up, over, and then almost all the way oh, back down. Weird. Yeah. Like it was really odd. Then around 9 a.m., it stopped moving for about 20 minutes. Oh, shit. Yeah. That, yeah. It's not a, it's not a good mm-hmm. thing. And police figured that was, Mm-mm. they assumed it was not a good thing, too. Oh, gosh. But days turned into weeks and there were oh, no. no leads. Oh, like, yeah. It even was, where that stopped. Like, wouldn't you go search that area? I'm sure I, they did. Yeah. They didn't find anything. Oh, God. But then Holly's belongings start oh, turning no. up along back roads throughout the county. Oh, God. Her homework, mm-hmm. the lunch her mother had packed, mm-hmm. a notebook, and her phone. Uh, Each so was found discarded on the side of a different country road. So he's throwing things out. There's just in random, random places to try to spread out. Oh, God. Yeah. So there's no clue where to look. Right. Police then turn their attention to a new suspect. 52-year-old Terry Britt was a registered sex offender who lived near the Bobo's home and Mm -hmm. also lived near where some of Holly's belongings were turning up in the same general Mm. vicinity. This is where it's going to get kind of confusing. So Terry Britt is a registered sex offender who's out of prison. Terry Dykus is the lead investigator for the no. Tennessee Bureau of Investigation. So there's two Terrys. Okay. (laughs) So we got to like- That's an unfortunate last name though. Dykus. Okay, so we'll go with <laughs> Dykus. Dykus versus Dykus. Yeah. Brit versus okay. Brett. Okay. Dykus is So the Terry good one. Dykus, yes, he was familiar with uh Terry Brett. He had already been part oh, of dealt his, with him and yeah. he's dealt with him before. Mm-hmm. He was familiar with him. He knew that Terry Brett had a type, blonde, oh. blue-eyed <gasps> girls. Mhm, right? I know one of those. I'm looking at one of those. <laughs> I'm looking at them. Good thing you have pink hair right now. Right, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, God. So, let's see. He um, he had previously been convicted of kidnapping and rape and <gasps> had already spent most of his life in prison. Wow. Yeah. Oh, right. that sounds like a good suspect. And the kicker, he fit Clint's description of Holly's <gasps> abductor. He was the oh, right shit. height, weight, Wait. hair. Oh, God. Now, Terry Britt had an alibi for that morning. He said, this is weird, he was out buying a bathtub at a salvage yard with his wife, apparently at Hmm. seven something in the morning. (laughs) Yeah. Hmm. But the salvage yard had no record of his purchase. All he had was like a, like a handwritten receipt. Oh, but he could have written himself. Exactly. At any time or whatever. Hmm. And the salvage yard, I guess, didn't really have anything. Police were able to, to obtain a search warrant for Britt's home. Probably pretty easy because he was already. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, he, you know he's already uh, you know on the watch list, right? Mm-hmm. They brought cadaver dogs with <gasps> them, and the dogs alerted to two of Terry's oh. vehicles. Uh oh, and some tools found on his property. Wow, and would those just be human cadaver dogs, or do they? As far as I understand, they only alert to human decomposition. That's amazing. 
Because I've listened to a couple of really interesting podcasts. There's, oh gosh, why can't I think of what it's called? Oh my God, there's a really good podcast that I listen to. Cold. Cold is one of them like that. Oh, cold. So good. Yes. God, what was it? It's, um, is it in the, in the dark? Oh God, now I'm going to have to find it. But the first season was all about trying to find this boy who had been missing (gasps) on a fishing trip. Yes. I think I listened to that one. Ooh, right, and they thought so he was in the in the lake. In the lake, yes. And they brought, oh God. so they they I think went. That into, is cold. Maybe is it is cold. cold. I could be wrong. Oh, it was so sad. Anyway, uh, but like, yeah, there was a lot. I listened to a lot of discussion about like what the dogs dogs can and can't find, and how yes, there's like a difference between the smell of human remains mm-hmm. and other remains, and how long they can That's smell right. them There was for. like a, a lady who had trained her dogs really, really well on that. Yeah. I think we she, listened to the same podcast. I think we did. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. It was so um, good. It was really good. Right. It was one of the first podcasts that really got me into yeah, listening me to podcasts because <sighs> I wasn't really a mm-hmm. podcast person before that. Right. Until then. And now I don't do anything else. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So the dogs uh, alerted, right, to okay. that. They were tested for DNA. But none was found. So they still smell like Yeah, remains, they had something on it. But they didn't find it. anything, right? The dogs know something. Police also wiretapped Terry's phone, but they didn't come up with anything. Mm. And then another unfor- unfortunate thing happened. TBI investigator Terry Dykus, the good Terry. Mm-hmm. Good Terry. He was totally convinced that Terry Britt was their man. Oh. But not everybody agreed. And so eventually he was cut from the team <gasps> and he was accused of having tunnel vision. Oh, they shit. thought he just wasn't being objective enough, right? Where he was uh, just like, you guys are like... Yeah, he's, he knew. Right. Mm. So he's cut from the team and the rest of the you know, police and the, the TBI are, are doing their investigation. And lo- locals keep sending in tips to the police, which happens right. in all cases, right? Right. A lot of false ones, mm-hmm. false leads of Holly is Holly's being held in a barn. Holly's uh, being kept in a well and none of them mm-hmm. panned out. I think I saw her at the gas station, all that exactly. kind of stuff. Yeah. Right. And then there's also those sick, sick individuals who like to take credit mm, for things. I know. What, what I, I don't get it. With them? They I, want attention? I don't get I, it either. It's really twisted. So at one point, police are tipped off that a 27-year-old man named Zach Adams had been bragging and taking credit for Holly's abduction. Mm. Okay. Because that's such a positive thing to brag about. Like It's a cool thing uh, to do. Yeah. I, right? I just, wow. People mention him to the police. Zach Adams and his younger brother, Dylan, who was 23. So they're 27 and 23, along with two cousins, Jason Autry and Shane Austin. You're hearing all these names Oh, yes. I was like Jason, Shane. (laughs) We got got Mm -hmm. Zach, Dylan, Jason, Shane, Shane. Autry, Austin. Right. Yeah, Clint. Mm -hmm. They're all in there. Mm -hmm. Jason Autry's 37. His cousin, Shane Austin, is 26. The four of them all hung in a group. They were best friends. And the four of them had a reputation for being drug addicts and small time mm. crooks. Oh, that's so, right. That's fine. You know. mm-hmm. <laughs> so is he just bragging? Are they serious? Mm-hmm. Is it, it's... are people just calling in because they have a reputation? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, these guys are gross. Right. Check them out. In January of 2014. So this is like, oh God, like what? Nine, 10 months after yeah. she disappears and Aww. nobody's found her still. Aww. No trace. Dylan Adams, he's the 23-year-old. Okay. He's arrested on a separate weapons charge. As part of his plea deal, he had to live with a retired police officer. Oh, he wow. He was, yeah, well, so it was like a plea deal. So he was mentally disabled oh, okay. to a certain degree. Incapacitated a little bit. Okay. Right. So they worked out this situation where as, as part of his plea deal, he's going to go live with this retired police officer. That's Weird. crazy. Yeah. I, I thought okay. that was really odd, but I'm like... That's nice for the right. policeman to do. Yeah. Right? Hey, maybe they're wow. going to try to get this kid a, a mm-hmm. leg up and like yeah. getting his life straight, right? That's pretty amazing. So at one point, he tells the officer he knows what happened to Holly. Mm. So police bring Dylan in for questioning and they question him over a couple of months, a series of times over a couple of months. Okay. But there are several different versions of what he told oh, police. Yeah. So he's right? just making shit up. In one version, he says he saw Holly sitting in a chair at Shane Austin's house and she was wearing a pink top, which I think I forgot to mention somewhere, but somewhere in my research, she was actually wearing a pink top that day. Mm, Although. But that could have been reported to the news. Right. You're right. Especially when you were searching. When you're searching for her. Exactly. And it's not like wearing a pink top is like. Really unusual. A weird random thing. Right. 
if she was wearing neon orange, maybe, uh, you know, yeah, or maybe. something. But it is turkey hunting season. So. But you, oh, you're right. <laughs> neon green? I don't know. <laughs> neon yellow. See, I, I don't, turkey hunting doesn't come into my frame of reference. <laughs> like, that doesn't, this is odd. Of course, me. not a lot of humans look like turkeys. So. God, I, I hope mean, not. some That'd do. Be a massive turkey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> One hell of a turkey. Mitch McConnell. Well, no, he's more of a turtle. <laughs> <laughs> don't go turtle hunting. Don't go turtle you, hunting. You might right. shoot Mitch McConnell. And there you go. Exactly. It's a whole different situation. Oh, wow. Is that that's, that's a, Mitch McConnell? That's Did a, I look like him? That's a fairly decent. I really uh, look like him, huh? <laughs> it's, a, it's a pretty good likeness, right there. Yeah. That's, I mean, I've been practicing and shit. I you still actually look more attractive than he does. <laughs> <laughs> that's hard. <laughs> that is. Woo. All right. So. <laughs> At one point, Dylan says, oh, yeah, I saw Holly sitting in a chair at Shane Austin's house and she was wearing a pink top. And then his brother, Zach, says that he had raped Holly and recorded it on his phone. And then Jason Autry was there, too. But then in another interview, Dylan says that Zach, Jason and Shane all kidnapped Holly and took her back to Zach's house. And then all four of them sexually assaulted her. Okay, so they need to go to Zach's house. Right. There's a lot. There's a lot going right. on here. Yeah. Right. And he's telling all different mm-hmm. stories. Oh, and first he tells first he says that Zach killed Holly. Then he says it was Jason and he can't give police specifics on where Holly was killed or where to mm. find her body. He doesn't know shit. He did. No, yeah. he doesn't. No. So Cindy Adams, who is Zach and Dylan's mother, says Dylan was bullied into a confession. He has intellectual disabilities and to the point where he has trouble telling time. So he wears a digital oh, watch. Oh, wow. Okay. So yeah, that's pretty extreme. Just just to kind of give a, mm-hmm. you know, a sense of what we mean by intellectual disabilities. Okay. Time was difficult for him. Yeah. So okay. she knows that her son is a people pleaser and that Aww. he probably told police what he thought they wanted to hear. Oh, that's sad. That's like making a yeah. murderer guy kid. Absolutely. Aww. That's totally what it reminded me of. Yeah. There's a quote from her on the TV show 2020. Mm -hmm. saying, this is a weird quote, but still, I know my boys, they're drug addicts, they're not murderers. Okay, well, right. I guess if you got to pick one demon. Uh, Right, exactly. One's better than the other. She still must be proud. Yeah. (laughs) Proud mom. I know they're druggies, but. I know my boys. (laughs) I know my boys. They're heroin addicts, but they are not killers. (laughs) Right. I hope I never have to say that. Right. Oh, God, I'm not yeah, Catholic, right? but I'm going to sign myself. <laughs> sign yourself anyway. <laughs> Can't hurt, right? No. Mm. So, but on March 5th, 2014, Zach Adams is indicted by a grand jury what? of especially aggravated kidnapping. Especially. Which I'm not quite sure. It's a especially Tennessee thing. <laughs> this is just kidnapping. a little. This is a special. Right. <laughs> exactly. Sorry, that was my Tennessee accent. And it was brilliant. Not that good. <laughs> and first degree felony in the disappearance of Holly Bobo. Jason Autry was indicted on the same charges by a special grand jury two months later. Jeez. Right. I, <sighs> I feel like they don't really have a whole lot yeah, here. Yeah, they're but... just like, eh, we'll do whatever we can just to get. Well, there, there was talk of like, there was a lot of pressure to solve oh, yeah. the case. Of course. Because, you know, that's what we want to do. We want to just throw anybody in jail and not Ugh. actually find what's right. happening. Leave the right person out. So realizing that Dylan is not going to make a good witness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Shane Austin is offered immunity in exchange for testifying against his friends. Oh, shit. So of course he's going to. Of course. Right. Mm-hmm. So, yes, he agrees. Mm-hmm. But... He could not accurately tell the police where to find Holly's body either. Mm -hmm. He led them to a field, but she wasn't there. Yeah, because he's making shit up. (laughs) Right. They're all trying to just dig themselves out. Mm. So police decided he was not cooperating and revoked the deal. Oh, God. It's a freaking mess is what it is, right? Yeah. own a small business or make cool and unusual handcrafted items we love artists and small business owners and we would be stoked to help get the word out about yours consider advertising with us through this podcast it's super affordable and our podcast reaches every corner of the u.s even worldwide 
To find out more, visit otfmpodcast.com and click on the Advertise With Us link. Let's get your creativity into the hands of people who would love it. It is now Sunday, September 7th, 2014. Two hunters find oh. human remains at the foot of a cell phone t- tower. It's always the hunters. Yep. Near Interstate 40. Remember her mm-hmm. cell phone made its way up near there? That's right. Oh, One no. of the spots. Why didn't they check? Phone had I spots. think that I, I thought that they did. I don't know. I, I saw somewhere where like the owner of that property said that they were surprised because they're like, they looked here. <gasps> So I don't know. I don't know if later, maybe it was dumped later. Uh, Yeah. Mm -mm. So this cell phone tower is near interstate 40 and it's just six miles away from Zach Adams house. (gasps) Another reason not to go hunting as well. Not Mm -hmm. because of Zach Adams house, but because you will always find human remains. You will find human remains all the time. Uh, It was interesting. They were not hunting Turkey. They were hunting ginseng. Oh, wow. I've heard that's worth a lot of money. Really? I didn't know that. But isn't ginseng... A root? Mm-hmm. So, Wouldn't that be scavenging? Yeah. I feel like hunting, hunting is, I was like, is the, is the ginseng running from you? Do you need to <laughs> shoot it down? I don't. With I rubber band was, guns. Yeah. I thought it was weird that they called it ginseng <laughs> hunting. It is interesting. Or, you know, mining. My, or, right. Yeah. What do you call it? Mushroom hunt, hunting. Gathering. Do you call it I don't gathering? Know. It's just, I was just like, hmm. I'm sorry. Hunting, hunting implies. Implies something that is running. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, if but, you consider the digging tool a weapon, I mean, you're digging yes. it out of its, its But life hunting force. involves there being prey. Well, they are and, prey. And they're not. <laughs> they're hunting no. it. They're digging it out of its life force. I still feel like that's a you're weird right. way to You're right. It's a stretch. Away, right? You're right. It's a stretch. <laughs> so anyways, two guys wandering okay. around trying to find Looking groups. For <laughs> right. Is, right. Find some human remains, right? Mm. They recovered a skull. Teeth, ah, jawbone. Ah, oh, Jesus. Rebecca would ribs. be screaming. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, the teeth, right? The teeth. She can't have um, the teeth. Several ribs oh. and a shoulder blade. Wow. They, so they didn't just stop at the school. They were like, let's dig this whole freaking thing up. Oh, no. This was the FBI. They came and they oh. they, 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 they okay. dug. Not the hunters. The hunters were like, <laughs> shit, bones. And they, they were like, I'm out. Called 911. Okay. They okay. were like, mm-hmm. smart guys then. Mm-hmm. Not going okay. near that ginseng. <laughs> Right. No matter how good it is. No, the FBI dug up the stuff. Okay. They also found makeup, a purse, mm. car keys, pencils and pens, earrings, an inhaler, and her promise ring from Drew. Oh, baby. Oh, it's heartbreaking. I know. I know. Oh, sweet girl. Um, okay. I have a picture of the promise ring. It was so pretty. Oh, she I never got hopes. a promise ring. I never anybody. did either. From nobody. <sighs> Me neither. Guys. We were gypped. <laughs> we got gypped. If you are dating someone in high school or college that you really, really, really like, give her a promise ring. Yeah. That's it's, all. And that, it doesn't have to be anything fancy or expensive. Uh-huh. You know, and it doesn't, it's, just a, it's not an engagement. It's just no, to it's say just that you a, really care about her. And yeah, it makes her feel really right? happy. Dental records confirmed that after more than three and a half years, Holly had finally been found. Oh, girlfriend. Yeah. Her skull had a bullet hole that <gasps> entered the back of her head from like the right side behind her ear hmm. with a trajectory, trajectory going left, fracturing her left cheekbone when it exited. So that was not a deer grunt. That was not a deer grunt. Hmm. It was determined that that was the cause of death and it was ruled a homicide. Although we, we pretty much kind of already knew that was. Yeah, I suppose the suicide right. could. Almost maybe have that kind of trajectory. I don't think you usually shoot yourself from behind. You'd have to work to do that. That'd be weird. Yeah. But I, right. And she walked out, she walked away with a guy. I think they all were pretty sure of her, like, somebody else did this shit. Yeah. Plus, she did an obscene amount of studying for that. Right. You know, you don't do that until you at least take it. Right. Yeah. Exactly. She had her plans for the future. This was not suicide at all. Oh, Holly. No question on that. I love that name, by the way. I always like that name. Such a pretty name. She was super pretty. Wait till you see pictures of her. She was a gorgeous girl. And there's pictures of her and Drew, and they were just friggin' adorable. Um, they would have had babies. They were going to have beautiful babies. Let's see. That was in September. Okay, a few weeks later, like 10 days later, okay. September 17, 2014, 
Dylan Adams was arrested and charged with tampering with evidence after telling investigators he disposed of evidence on the day of Holly's disappearance. And then he was later charged with rape on October 14th, 2014. So now they have three of them in custody, yeah. right? Oh, good Lord. <sighs> okay, what, are they all so going to go to court at the same time? It looked like it at first. Mm. Then in February of 2015, so a few months later, mm -hmm. before he can testify against his friends and cousins, oh. a now 30-year-old Shane Austin, who had been given the deal to, oh, yeah, to do to it, and then they revoked it, <gasps> right, and then oh, they shit. revoked it, mm -hmm. right, because he wasn't being he wasn't being as uh, forthcoming as they wanted him to do, because he couldn't tell them what he because didn't it, know. Because he didn't know anything, yeah. He's found dead by apparent oh, suicide. Good God. Oh, that's sad. He hung himself in a Florida hotel room. Mm. His attorney claims that Shane was driven to kill himself because of the undue stress mm -hmm. brought on by the, quote, witch hunt of a police investigation. Yep. It's almost like bullying. Uh-huh. And he maintained that Shane had cooperated completely and was totally innocent. Oh, God. That's so mm -hmm. now he's... Now he's lost his life for this. Right. Uh, three months later, after that, Dylan Adams was indicted on additional charges of especially aggravated kidnapping oh. and first degree murder. So now the three remaining guys are all up for the same thing. Come on. Uh, have they not learned anything? It's a, it's a hot mess, I'm telling mm -hmm. you. So police had no physical evidence linking mm -hmm. any of them to the crime. Mm -hmm. But prosecutors move forward, putting them all on trial oh, come on. and seek the death penalty oh, for all three. Come on. And all three plead not guilty. Yeah. Shit. The original TBI investigator on the case, Terry Dykus, the good Terry. Mm -hmm. The good Terry. Right. He was the one who was dismissed. Mm -hmm. Early he, on for thinking it was the other Terry. For thinking it was the other guys. Yeah. He doesn't believe the three men on trial are guilty. Mm -hmm. When right. asked on the TV show 2020 why he feels they're not responsible for Holly's murder, he said, quote, I don't think they're capable of doing arithmetic, much less this. <laughs> like, he was like, these Same. guys are morons. Same. <laughs> these guys are idiots. <laughs> they are not the capable. Sad, the sad thing is that Dylan was the only one who was actually, like, diagnosed with, like, mental inefficiencies right. the other right. two were just idiots apparently <laughs> is what this guy's saying these guys are just, just stupid come on and could they have gotten away with it this long right that was kind of his his theory and that the other guy was just such a perfect fit for the case yeah okay so oh. zach's trial began in september of 2017 so it's okay. just zach on trial so they didn't oh, put them shit. all together this was really weird and it this messed me up a little bit was I was looking at articles and seeing pictures and stuff. Oh. Um, in 2017, he looks husky. Plus okay. his hair is graying. Wow. Which I mean, I know some people He's gray a, right, earlier. Really early. So he was, I think he was in his, he was 30 something by the time oh. he went to trial. Okay. So yeah, I mean, so gray hair and I, stuff. Yeah, you could but start. He he looked husky. So apparently oh. he did really well in prison. Like he was <laughs> eating. He was eating everything they gave him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he looked kind of husky as opposed to how gaunt and slender he looked in his pre-trial hearings, wow. which I also have pi like pictures of. Like seriously, like once I saw like the pictures next eating. to each other, I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, that's, that's the, the same, same guy. guy. But it's, at first I thought the picture I was seeing of him in court was like his lawyer. I'm like, oh no, wait, that's the defendant. Like wow. he looked, granted, he also had his mm -hmm. hair nice and he was wearing a suit. Right. But as stress. opposed to before when he looked like a meth head, you know, I mean, he did, he looked, he looked yeah. like him. He was you know, sunken cheeks, dark mm, eyes, um, glazed sores. over eyes. Mm, yeah, he, yeah, he looked mm -hmm. not attractive. Gross. So not attractive. Not attractive, right? <laughs> so, but this kind of comes into play because like, you know, Clint said the guy who walked off with his sister, you know, was like 200 pounds. Oh, good and point. Good point. At the time that Holly was taken, Zach was not 200 pounds. Yeah. He was a skinny dude. He, he looked like a meth head. So he'd probably be 160, maybe? maybe. That's what I'm thinking. I yeah, you guys I will I will post the pictures and you will see, but like he he didn't fit the bill. Okay. And he didn't have long hair. He had short hair. Oh, so there's no way to grow out your hair that quick unless you wear a wig. And that's just stupid. Right. <laughs> right. Anyway, there was also uh there was also mention here and there that uh Zach was known to have been wearing camouflage shorts that day, but 
I kind of feel like, you know, in that area, that's also just a fashion statement. That's True. just a. That's just the norm. Mm-hmm. Right. I that's mean. Wyoming too. Just saying. My, right. Well, my kid owns camouflage stuff. We don't oh, yeah. hunt. Like, it's just, no, you know, it's, it's, it's just fashion. stuff people wear. Yeah. It's just right. Mm-hmm. So anyway. So Zach's lawyer, Jennifer Thompson, tells the jury that not only is Zach not guilty, but that he did not know Holly, nor had he ever laid eyes on her. Hmm. That's what she goes with. This trial is really rough. When Karen Bobo testifies, Uh-oh. a shocking detail comes out. Uh-oh. Karen actually taught Zach Adams mm. in the fourth grade. Oh. So she's at the trial of the murder of her daughter. And the accused is someone she taught as a fourth grader. And you get so close. Like my kids get so close to their teachers at that right? age in me- elementary school. Oh my gosh. Oh. Yes. I can't imagine. Mm-mm. So she manages to keep her composure until she's asked to identify Holly's belongings. And then she is so overcome oh, with grief God, I bet. that the court has to call a recess and they have to call a med- medic. And I believe she passed <gasps> out. Oh it, my God. Poor mama. And I believe the um, defense asked for a mistrial. Oh, and they're like, no, up. no, no. Just. Oh God. Oh, shut up. It's, oh, it's, you guys. Oh. After they come back from a recess, the prosecution introduces new piece of evidence that was just found before the trial began a pistol once owned by Shane Austin. I don't know how, but it was found underwater in a drainage ditch. However, there was no expert that they had could put on the stand that could say it was definitively the murder weapon. It was just, this was owned by one of the guys who can't testify because he killed himself. Oh, right. Yeah. And it's the right, it's in the right vicinity of the right caliber that it, could have been well it's, it's not really that doesn't it's not a smoking it. right it's not a smoking gun, <laughs> it's not right? a smoking gun that it's really just a, a wet gun, gun. <laughs> it's a it's, it's just a wet gun right. <laughs> exactly <laughs> dylan does not trust to testify in his brother's trial a because he was kind of a not good witness because mm-hmm. his story was all over right. the place he didn't know what he was talking about because but he, didn't he really didn't he didn't need to because Jason Autry, Zach's best friend, oh, had no. turned against him and was now the star witness for the prosecution. Because he's been, what, bullied into it a little yeah, bit? Yeah, I got the feeling more that he was really just looking for a plea deal. Oh. Mm-hmm. He was trying to avoid the death sentence. Well, yeah. Or just to but get out of it altogether. You, you would do anything you could to... True. This is true. So for years... Jason Autry had been claiming his innocence with all the pretrial hearings and all this, because it took a couple of years for them to get yeah. 2017 at this point. Right. But now he tells the jury that the morning Holly was abducted, he called Zach around 845 AM wanting to buy a morphine pill from him. And Zach said, well, meet me at Shane Austin's house. Hmm. That's the okay. other one, the cousin. Mm-hmm. When he arrived, Zach asked him to help get rid of a dead body that was wrapped in a quilt in the back of his pickup, you know, as a friend would. Like, hey, as long as you're here, I got something to move. Can you help? All right, let's do it. Right? Yeah, like, no. Uh, like wait. a dresser. <laughs> you know, right? Uh, um, this uh, rug, this this right. human-shaped rug we need exactly. to get rid of. And Jason apparently never sees that it's her. Zach just says, oh, that's Holly Bobo. Mm, I, I okay. Okay. Jason testifies that they drove on back roads to the Tennessee River near the Interstate 40 Bridge, which is right where her cell phone was hanging, right? The plan was to dump her body in the river. (laughs) This is what he said on stand. After they gut her and Mm. remove her intestines so that her body wouldn't float and allow sea turtles to eat her remains. Or I guess just turtles, not sea turtles, but whatever. Yeah, okay. I was like, what? What? Disgusting. But that's still. But still. Just, just, right. They're like, oh, this way the turtles will. I, it's that's so odd. nasty. That's right. really but, fucking So odd. they had a plan, according to him. Cell phone records for both of their phones show that they were, in fact, in that area that day. Hmm. You know, they can't pinpoint it specifically, but they pinged okay. near they were those there. areas, right? Apparently, they take the body out of the truck and lay mm-hmm. it on the ground. And Jason sees a foot move, and then <gasps> hears her moan. Stop it. No. Yeah. Oh, God. Jason tells the jury. And the mom's listening. The mom's listening. Quote. And there, I, I, there is video of this. I oh, took God. this quote from video that I saw. He tells the jury, quote, I told him, I said, this fucking bitch is still alive. 
I feel like he could have left that part out. Yeah, just <laughs> don't like, say that. My mama's there. Uh, I oh feel like God, it wasn't dude. necessary to be that specific and blunt. But so he stood lookout while Zach oh. went and got a pistol from his truck. God. He told uh, he told the jury that Zach fired one bullet into the back of Holly's head. Oh. And here's another quote from his testimony, which I also saw on video. Mm-hmm. It sounded like boom, boom, boom underneath that bridge. <laughs> it was just one shot, but it echoed. I'm like, you, oh. he really paints a picture, man. Yeah, he thanks, really dude. Oh, my God. God. It was just one shot, but it echoed. Oh, Birds God. went everywhere, all oh. up under that bridge. Sounds almost like a movie scene that he's describing. Right? Then just dead silent for just a second. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, hmm. see, I was wondering if you were going to catch that, too. It yeah. was like so perfectly described it doesn't quite sound like reality i don't know it's it's kind of sick like he's taking mm-hmm. in the beauty of the moment oh, it's just weird gross okay so then jason says that they loaded holly's body back in the truck and took off in case someone had heard something with the shooting right so they're like well we're not going to stay here now <laughs> and then he says after that oh, jason said that zach dropped him off at home so he didn't even finish with the whole favor yeah. he was asked to do yeah he was just what? like well, i gotta go now i'm dude. out oh, right my God. gets dropped off at home and later he asked zach what he did with the body mm-hmm. and zach told him he dumped it at kelly rich however that is not where holly's remains were found okay so that doesn't make sense then no her remains were actually found much closer to home and i googled where this kelly ridge is and it's like four hours away oh not even close so i don't i don't even understand they making shit up randomly i I don't know right shit just doesn't line up right jason also testifies that a few days later zach offers him money to kill dylan his little brother because Uh, dylan was talking too much and at first jason agreed to do it and then later he changed his mind okay this yeah no this (laughs) right so then the prosecution calls rebecca earp which also Wyatt Earp. This is all I know. Very, I was thinking names, that man. too. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> right? Prosecution calls Rebecca Earp, who is Zach's ex girlfriend, to testify. Okay. She tells the, the jury that Zach had started abusing meth and morphine after his grandmother passed away. She and Zach had a rocky relationship. Can't imagine why. I mean, meth. <laughs> right. You know? they got everything going for him right here. Mm-hmm. Everything sounds good. <laughs> he sounds amazing. He sounds like such a catch. Um, <laughs> Catfish. I mean, his mom's proud. His mom is very proud. <laughs> right? He's only a heroin addict. He's all right, exactly. But he's not a murderer. Mm-hmm. On the day Holly was abducted, Zach told his ex-girlfriend, Rebecca, they were dating at the time, mm-hmm. that he was going to haul metal. I guess this is just something people do. They just go to haul metal. like Kind of like fun. ginseng I don't know. hunting. I guess so, right? We haul metal right. or we ginseng right. hunt. Exactly. Or so- we make uh, moonshine. One or the other, or three, you know, you never know. These are the three activities available to us. He's going to Hall Metal. (sighs) Later that day, when she saw him in person, he had scratches on his neck and arms. But he hauled metal. But he hauled metal, right. You know, I would have been like, who you been with? Mm, (laughs) mm." (laughs) Then she said when they were together, they saw a news report about Holly. And Zach made a comment about they're never going to be able to find her. But Jesus. that also could have just been a... Like, right. we're in Tennessee. Like, right. there's so many places her. to put her. All right, okay. But the next time they got in an argument, he threatened to tie her up just like he did Holly Bobo, oh. and no one would ever see her again. Oh, well, okay, that's different. Right. Mm-hmm. So, is How he, credible is she? Is she also... Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know, right? So, how credible is she? Mm-hmm. Is he still just one of those sick guys who likes to take credit for shit? Mm-hmm. Did he really do something? I don't know. Then they have a bunch of inmates testify. They have all kinds of great witnesses. Well. mm -hmm. And they were all incarcerated with Zach. And they say he asked different inmates to pass a message along to Dylan, who was also in prison, to (laughs) shut up or he would find himself in a hole next to Holly. (laughs) Right? He also, they also testified that he bragged about what he did to holly and how pretty she was and that's because they all want to lessen their sentences so they're all like they want to lessen their sentences testify sure he he needs to brag to Mm -hmm. sound tough in Mm -hmm. prison i mean i yeah this all sounds bad but could it all just be bullshit Mm -hmm. 
So, all right. The defense focuses on the fact that none of the four accused men actually matches the description given by Clint Bobo. Totally. The Adams brothers and Jason Autry were all too tall and were either too slim or too mm-hmm. heavy to be the guy Clint saw. And okay. then Shane Austin was the correct weight and height, but Clint described a man with dark hair that covered his neck and Austin right. had short red hair. Oh, what? No, not right. even close. Okay. <laughs> right? So Zach's lawyers keep trying to point the finger at Terry Britt, the original suspect in the case, right? Who, by the way, in many articles, they referred to as Chester the Molester. Mmm, fun. Nice, right? Mm -hmm. We had one of those in my hometown, and his name really was Chester. Oh, dear God. (laughs) Mm. Well, fun. we have have Terry the Molester. (laughs) Mm. So good Terry, Terry Terry Dykes, the TBI. Mm -hmm, TBI investigator, he testifies that Terry Britt fit the description of the man Clint saw, that Terry's alibi was weak, this whole Mm -hmm. tub business, Mm -hmm. and that cadaver dogs alerted to vehicles and tools on his property. He's like, hello, you dipshits. It's fucking Terry. So he testifies to that. But then on cross-examination, they're like, yeah, but after so many months, you weren't on the case anymore and you weren't involved. So you don't really know. Because I was thrown off because they didn't believe me. Thrown off. Exactly. Right. Mm. So then, and I thought this was crazy. They brought Terry Britt in from prison Mm. to testify. (laughs) Right? Right. Which I thought was really weird. Right. Because it's not like he's going to be like, yeah, it was me. Yeah. Oh, by the way. In a court of law. Right. Right. At someone else's trial, I'd be like, no, you guys think that guy did it? I'm not sure. So anyways, they brought him in from where he was incarcerated. So he's back in jail at this point for kidnapping and attempted rape. Of course he is. Again. Again, because he's got an M.O. Mm -hmm. But there's no physical evidence to tie him to Holly's murder. Mm. However, again, there is no physical DNA or forensic evidence tying Zach to the murder. Right. So... Why are we even putting him on trial? Oh, the circumstantial evidence and the Mm. testimonies were enough for the jury. (gasps) On September 22nd, 2017, Zach Adams, now 33 years old, is found guilty of all charges. Oh, come on. And in Tennessee, the penalty phase comes right after. So minutes before the penalty phase was to begin, he makes a deal with prosecutors for life in prison without parole plus 50 years to avoid the death penalty. If he pleads guilty. Right. No, oh, Jesus. So, mm-hmm. I, I still, I don't really understand how you get life in prison without parole and then tack on 50 years because I still don't get yeah. why there's an option of parole if you've gotten right. no parole. What's the point that of the That doesn't make years? any sense, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure this guy's going to be up for parole sometime in the next 30 years or something because oh, totally. obviously, or they wouldn't tack that on, but whatever. Right. Our stupid whole system. different podcast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, Dylan Adams, younger brother, he's now 30 years old. He enters an Alford plea, which I think you talked about in one of our episodes earlier, didn't you? Uh, Alford plea? Twinkie defense. <laughs> Twinkie defense. Where did I read that? That was well, totally I, different. That's totally different. You're right. Okay. Well, I will tell you, I looked it up just in case. So okay. an Alford plea, which this is weird, a guilty plea in which the defendant maintains their innocence but admits that the prosecution's evidence would likely result in a guilty verdict if brought to trial. That's so unfair. That seems so unfair. Right? So he pleads and goes to jail, but gets a lesser sentence because he says, yeah, I get that you have enough to convict me on, but I still say I'm innocent. That just seems super unfair. Messed up. What are we, the third world country? Come on. It's bizarre. So Dylan gets... 15 years for facilitation of first degree murder and 35 years for especially aggravated kidnapping. That stupid especially thing. I don't get that. Hey, it's <laughs> not just aggravated, aggravated, but it's especially. Especially. Well, because he had a deer call with him. <laughs> that <laughs> that is ex- very especially. especially. Here's the part that really mm, this pisses me off. At Jason Autry's sentencing, because remember, he mm. cut a deal to testify against yeah. his friends. At his sentencing, which just happened in September of 2020, oh geez, the judge, Judge McGinley, praised his testimony at Zach's trial, and he said, "quote His testimony was some of the most credible, persuasive testimony I have ever heard given in a courtroom." 
So he should be an actor. Right. Because it, doesn't it, was, it was a little truth. too... Right. And there's nothing to mm-hmm. corroborate it. No. Right. So Jason accepted a plea deal that reduced his sentence. Remember, he was charged with all the same things, mm-hmm. right? The especially okay. aggravated, especially. the hiding of a body, mm-hmm. the rape, murder. Mm. Okay. His plea deal reduced his sentence to eight years. Whoa. Inc- including time served. Holy what? Uh-huh. So Jason Autry, who is now 46 years old, was released from prison on September 16th, 2020. Wow. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to feel about that. I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't think he did it, but right. that's crazy. The sentence. Okay. All right. But by December 3rd of 2020, he was arrested and charged <laughs> with possession of a weapon, possession Shocker. of drugs and evading mm-hmm. arrest. So he's mm-hmm. back in prison. Mm-hmm. So Shocker. Mm-hmm. while the judge really commended him on his testimony, on his wonderfully dramatic reenactment right. of some movie. Right. He is still kind of a douchebag. Yeah. And he's, he's back in prison. He's not. Where he I'm probably really belongs. not surprised. Yeah. So <laughs> little fun fact, Holly oh. Bobo, actually her cousin is country singer Whitney Duncan. No way. Mm-hmm. Not that I know because I don't right. listen to country, but that's amazing. No, yeah. but that's pretty cool, right? Mm-hmm. Um, in 2017, she released a song about Holly called Better mm-hmm. Place. And mm-hmm. I saw a little bit of it, but it was hard to watch because the video for it includes photos and video of Holly growing up. Mm-hmm. That was really sweet. They were they were mm-hmm. close. I just got chills again. So mm-hmm. And this is the other part. <sighs> Holly's oh. mom now wears the promise ring <gasps> Drew had given Holly. That was found with her remains. So she has that and she wears it every day. How sad. So Zach is in prison and Dylan, who mm-hmm. really obviously did not know what was going on. Mm-mm. And again, they were all they were all accused with raping her based on the fact that people said that they did. But there was no forensic. Well, There's no her evidence body was that out anybody there too long did to anything. be able to right. tell. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm. Jason is back in prison only because he's a dipshit Mm. for weapons and drugs and stuff like that. Right. Shane killed himself because of the entire situation. Mm -hmm. And I guess the only other thing is if, if Zach didn't do it and Terry Britt did, Mm -hmm. at least he's in prison also. True. Because obviously he he can't quit. Can't stop. Right. Oh God. So the, the family truly believes that the right people are in jail. And Somebody there was, is, a, there was but... a whole bunch of other, like, th- there were so many stories and there was so much, but it was all circumstantial, but there was a whole bunch of evidence this way and that way. And I, Terry Dykus knew though. I don't, yeah. I, God, I I'm wish we could kinda, interview him. I'm kind of still with Terry Dykus, right? Mm-hmm. Although there was, there was this whole other little bit. This is the part that I didn't really research that much because it, it actually got confusing. But there were two other guys who at one point were also arrested in, re- in relation to this because, and I, I don't really know how they tie in, but one of the guys supposedly had video mm-hmm. of Zach raping Holly on his phone and that his roommate, a, a woman, saw it. She didn't do anything about mm. it. What the what the but fuck, she, lady? But she testified about it. But no one, there was never any record of it. They never found the video. The video is nowhere to be seen. Again, this is so all hearsay, right? So I don't we know still don't you... totally know what happened to her. I still feel like we don't know exactly mm-hmm. what happened to her. Exactly mm-hmm. who was involved? Mm-hmm. Who's responsible? I, it's mm. right. God, that's rough. It'd be so hard being her family, like not having a definitive answer. Like you want yeah. to know exactly know. who, exactly when, exactly how. Her parents seem to feel pretty strongly that they know what happened and that it was Zach and his friends and they're okay with it. I don't know if they, they, they need to have an answer and they need to mm-hmm. be okay with it. Mm-hmm. And maybe it's okay because it's like, well, even if it was the other guy, the other guy's He's in, in jail prison. too. Yeah, he's awful. So I don't know. I just feel like it's it's very strange it's just very strange there was not a lot of information on her boyfriend drew i looked i tried to look i i assume because there wasn't 
he obviously was looked into and right, right. and cleared dismissed. right away. Right, right. Oh, he was obviously guy. out. How traumatizing! Turkey, turkey hunting, turkey hunting. Right, he was mm. out turkey hunting. I, oh, how traumatizing to find out your girlfriend had who knows, you know. Right. Oh. Right. And her brother, her brother, who oh, probably is still kicking brother. himself, going, oh, my God, oh I could have stopped it. I could have gone out there. I could have said guy. something. Oh, I should have checked on her. It's not his fault. No, it's not know. his fault. No, you don't know. No. That is one doppelganger. I felt it was like a doppelganger no, because he was convinced mm-hmm. that's that my sister's him. boyfriend. Oh. And apparently they were also friends. I read somewhere oh. that they were also friends. I, there was that one place where he mm-hmm. said, oh, I had talked to Drew on the phone the night before. I knew he was going right. turkey hunting. So, right. so he felt knew. he knew this guy well enough that if you saw him, you'd go, mm-hmm. that's him. Eh, that's just Drew. Yeah. Well, right. and you're looking out the window. It's far away. You're probably tired. It's seven o'clock mm-hmm. in the freaking morning. Yeah. The dog's barking. I wouldn't barking. pay too much attention. I'd just right. be like, eh, whatever. Mm-hmm. Son of a bitch. So I have an obscene amount of sources for this. Ooh, let's just do it. There. We got WBBJTV.com chillingcrimes.com expressdigest.com wikipedia.com wmcactionnews5.com all that's interesting.com <laughs> wvlttv oh, dot tv abcnews.go.com wsmv.com good lord lawandcrime.com and and this was really good 2020 season 20 episode 3 called Justice for Holly. There was a surprising, a lot of these articles and stuff had courtroom video from testimony Mm -hmm. that I was like really surprised Mm -hmm. to see so much of it. And there were so many news reports. It was like when this trial was going on, every TV station was like every bit of information that came out in the trial, man, they had it on. Now, maybe it's just because I live near Chicago and I'm just Mm -hmm. not used to hearing shit like that. Right Here, this was huge and this was unusual. But I'm not used to turning... Yeah. I'm not used to hearing on the news every day specifics about one particular trial and who testified and what they said and then the next one who testified. Especially before the trial's over. Yeah. Right. That's shocking. It was was weird. There was was a lot of video. Wow. (laughs) It's a lot of video. That's interesting. Yeah, there's video of the the TBI holding up the <gasps> the thing, the items they found, oh, her remains, her oh, personal belongings. Mama. It's on TV going, oh, and here's mama. what we found. Here's her beat up purse. Oh, her here's her mama. inhaler. Oh, my God. The Like, the, I can't watch freaking videos of my kids as as tiny kids, let alone if you lose a freaking <sighs> child. I can't handle right. it. The, no. the, her poor mm. mama. Right. So, of course, she got upset and passed out. I don't know how she survived. Oh. I, I don't I don't know. Amazing. So, that is the story of oh, Holly Bobo. Holly. At least they're all in jail, so somebody's paying for it. We just don't yeah. know. I, I, It sounds like it's Terry, but... I, I mm. still have that that mm. feeling. And I will show you pictures of... Um, they have a picture of what he looked like at the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And... Yeah, if you're Mm going to look at the four of them at the time and then Mm -hmm. look at Terry at the time and who Mm -hmm. looks like the description. Mm -hmm. Terry. I mean, there's that. He lived in the area. Mm -hmm. He was recently out of prison for doing the same damn thing. It's Mm -hmm. just... I mean, um, yeah, and he kept going back to prison for the same shit. Right, it wasn't like he was reformed or whatever. (laughs) No. Obviously. Mm -hmm. So anyways, Mm -hmm. well, thank you everybody for for listening to another episode. That was a rough one. Yeah, stay odd. Stay like odd. Stay <laughs> odd. Um, and, and we could really use your help sharing our podcast. And, yeah. and we need some new Patreon members. We want to keep going, mm-hmm. but we could Absolutely. use a little money to help us keep going. We could, we could, <laughs> we could use a little help a if little you're funds. able to. Mm-hmm. And if you can't help us, just sh- spread the word. All right. Sure. We would, Get us out right there. Now, right now, we, uh, we're, we're big in Australia. I think we have like three <laughs> listeners. Three, three, three Woo! maybe four. Woo! But, you know, when you have a, a, a smaller audience, three in one country mm-hmm. that's not your own is pretty big. I it's feel. amazing. Like, so we, we love, yeah. I really kind of want to move to Australia. So can you sponsor me? Um, Just saying. I, you know, you can tell me about it. I did until I started seeing the size of the spiders <laughs> and the, 
the yeah. snake rain fucking spiders there that that's a that's a hard pass for me now that's uh, enough i don't sorry know. i can't uh, it depends I, on where I, i'm at i'm okay. i can't risk that i'm sorry mm, but enough. please share us with other people mm. if you know anybody else who is also as twisted and dark as we mm. are please let them know i about feel like we're not alone I, I, I feel like we're gaining more people that we're not we realize alone. we're not alone. <laughs> we are not alone. And we're not even talking about aliens. We're just right. talking about other odd people. Other weirdos. <laughs> other weirdos <laughs> like us. There's a lot. So help us find our tribe. <laughs> mm-hmm. We need to build our tribe. Yes, we would like to build our tribe. And if you get a chance, it'd be really cool if you take a picture, either a selfie Mm -hmm. listening to our podcast or just like, hey, this is where I listen. I listen in the car Mm -hmm. or I listen at work or I listen while I clean the house. Just like Mm -hmm. post a picture of where you listen to us and tag us on on Facebook Mm -hmm. or 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 Instagram Instagram or or wherever. We don't know other Twitter. We'll catch up with technology. (laughs) This is, Snapchat. This, I don't know. This, this All these things. Twitters? We'll get there. I'm going to do the Twitters. I'm going to do the um, tweets. The tweets. <laughs> but it does take a, a lot of time. It's and a lot of work. And mm-hmm money and, and all that but hey if you guys like it we're gonna keep going so mm-hmm. please share us do what you can to keep us going so thanks right. everybody thank you Bye. and goodbye to see images from this story follow us on facebook instagram and twitter at odfm podcast or on our website at odfmpodcast.com, where you'll also find a link to our merch store, where you can get awesome stuff like t-shirts, mugs, stickers, and more. And if the weekly podcast just isn't enough to fill your ODFM cup full, join our fan club on Patreon for more content like minisodes, bloopers, and discounts at our merch store. That site is patreon.com slash odfmpodcast. And if you do love our bloopers and need more than we naturally do, which is a lot, buy us a glass of wine at buymeacoffee.com slash ODFM podcast. Thanks for listening to another episode of ODFM, hosted by Kelly DeVries and Jenna Swanson. Production and editing by Kelly DeVries. Theme music by Eric Swanson. ODFM is a satirical true crime podcast for entertainment purposes only. The stories you hear are serious and true. The comments and opinions are not. We apologize if any of our content is harmful or disrespectful.